morning. My name is Lady Karen of Cinebarks, which is in the mid realm. And today I'm going to be talking about how to build a clay oven. I've been teaching the class and we built a clay oven, and so can you, at Penzik for the last couple of years. But I thought I'd take the opportunity for virtual Penzik to teach the class in front of our actual oven. Uh, I also have a couple of props with me, and there's a handout that you can follow along with. Um, it's a Google Doc, and I believe that there will be a link in the description of this video that will have a link to the Google Doc. I said that twice, and you can follow along, and hopefully things will make a little bit more sense than when I'm just talking. I also never edited a video before, but I will try my best to edit this one to put some pictures on the screen that will hopefully help clarify some of the points that I want to make. So, how do you build a clay oven? Can you build a clay oven? Yes, you can, and I'm going to show you how. Uh, there's a couple of steps. The first thing that you're going to do is the first step you do in any project. You're going to take measurements and make a pattern. Then we're going to build the platform, which is this part, the thing that the oven actually sits on. You're going to make a basket, which doesn't seem relevant, but I promise you it is. Then we're going to uh, build our door, which is a critical part of the oven. We're going to mud the oven, which is the fun and messy part. And then we're going to fire it up, which is also the fun and messy part if you like playing with fire. So a caveat before we get started, that if you don't want yourself or your food covered in some degree of ash, uh, this probably isn't the cooking method for you. As you can see, it's pretty dirty even after it's done being mudded. Um, but it is a lot of fun. It's fun to build, it's fun to cook in, it's fun to have and brag about, so you should totally build one if you have the space for it. We're going to go over materials really quick. And some of these building materials are the ones that we use to build the platform, so if you decide to use other materials, you can. We used cinder blocks, sand, 2 by 4s fire brick inside the oven. That one's not negotiable. I've, I've either mentioned it or I'm going to mention it other places in my video. Reeds and vines for building the basket. Again, another alternative is to do sand. Uh, clay, that one you kind of need, can't get around it. You're going to need straw, water, and a tarp, bucket, and shower curtain, our preferred method, for mixing the clay together. Um, some cooking and fire management things that you're going to need. Have a fire extinguisher on hand. We always do. We've never used it, but you know what? It makes me feel good to know it's there. Uh, Blowpipe or bellows is useful to have. Welding gloves. It gets really hot in the oven and welding gloves are rated for really high heat, so I highly recommend them. Plus, you can get them for really cheap at like Home Depot or other big box stores. Get yourself a fireproof metal table to be cooking on. If you're taking hot things out of the oven, you don't want to put them down on a plastic table. Uh, also have a couple buckets of water standing by. You'll have the fire extinguisher, but the water can't hurt. Um, and oh, I don't know if I've mentioned this in another place in the video. You're going to want a bucket big enough to hold your door because even though the door is disposable and it's going to get charred over the years of use, one thing that you can do to help preserve its life is to make sure that it is absolutely soaking wet before you put it in the oven. Um, that will help prolong its life a little bit. So a bucket to hold your door is a great thing to have. Uh, we recommend having a metal pizza peel because obviously you're going to want to make pizza. A wooden pizza peel is not going to play well in a 1000 degree oven. Uh, and last but not least, if you can get your hands on a non-contact thermometer, I highly recommend those. Those are a great way to see... Truck. They're a great way to see what the outside temperature of your oven is and the inside temperature of the oven is. Um, if you find one that's rated for over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit, please let us know because ours just zeroes out and says hot after a certain temperature. Okay, like I said, the first step is making a pattern and that's why I'm holding this pot. Uh, what you'll need to make the pattern is actually really easy. You're going to need a pot and a big piece of cardboard and probably like a pen or a pencil or marker or whatever you like to draw with. Um, yeah, so why do you need a pot to make your pattern? Because trust me when I say you don't want to build the entire oven and then find out that the pot you were planning on using in it doesn't actually fit through your door. That's not going to be fun because as much fun as it is to build an oven, it's a lot of work and you don't want to have to do it twice. So take the pot that you want to use in the oven, put it on your big piece of cardboard, and trace an arch around it. You want to make sure that you have enough room not only for the handles, but for your hands around the handles. Again, you don't want to find out that you can't fit it in or that you have to turn it a weird way to get it to fit in your oven. So that arch that you drew on the piece of cardboard is going to be the opening of your door. So when in doubt, make it a little bit bigger than you think you need it. The next step after that is to trace out the actual height of your oven. And the magic ratio that you need to keep in mind there is two thirds. 
you want the height of your door to be two thirds the size of your total oven. And I know with our specific oven, it doesn't quite look like it's two thirds. It looks like it's almost the entire oven, which is because our actual doorway is like in here and it's smaller. We've had to build up and add to our oven over the years. Um, but as long as that opening is two thirds of the total height of the oven, you will get proper airflow and air circulation. And if I can, I'll put a picture on here to illustrate exactly what kind of airflow I'm talking about. Um, that ensures that you don't need a chimney in your oven. We've seen lots of ovens with chimneys. They're really cool. I just, you don't have to build one. They're complicated and unnecessary and you don't have to build one unless you think it's really, really cool and you can't live without a chimney in your life. So once you have that, the first arc traced out and the second arch traced out with that two thirds height, then you've got a template for your oven. Um, what you can do then is you've got that big piece of paper You've got it traced out on your big piece of cardboard, and again, I'll have a picture inserted here. And the next thing you want to do is figure out the area of your oven. How big do you want it to be? Again, this is an oven that is going to take you a long time to build, and it's going to take a long time to fire it up to get it hot enough to cook in. So you're probably not going to want to make just one dish, you're probably going to want to make at least a couple of things. So you want to make sure that the total width, the total floor plan, so to speak, of your oven is big enough to fit at least, at least a couple of pots and pans in so that you can be cooking more than one thing at once. Or so that you can be cooking a couple things in the back while you're cooking a few things in the front. Okay, so now you've got your pattern. You've got your big piece of cardboard that shows you the width of the oven. Keep that, by the way. Don't get rid of it. You've got your other piece of cardboard or paper, whatever you like, that shows the front arc and the total height of your oven. So we're going to take a break from our patterning and talk about making the base or the platform of the oven. As you can see here, ours is made out of three layers of cinder block, a box made out of just plain two by fours. I don't think that they're weatherproof or pressure treated or anything. They're just plain, plain piece of wood and then sand in the middle, and our oven is built on top of that. We also have this extra little platform because like I said before, we've had to build out our oven over the years. Hello, Mr. Squirrel. And we needed a little bit more space, so we added to our platform. Um, there's no magic formula for how tall you want your platform to be. It doesn't matter. Uh, if, you, if we go to Pensick again, and you get a chance to visit Three Bears up in, I believe, N17, I will put a correction on screen if that's not correct. Uh, you will see that they build their oven right on the ground, which is fine, but not the most comfortable height to cook at. So we built our oven, the squirrel is making a lot of noise, sorry. We built our oven at a height that it was basically comfortable for us to work at. So I've got another table here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's about, it's about table height. Um, it's not going to hurt my back too much when I'm bending over to put things in the oven, take things out of them and it's a very comfortable height to work on the oven if we need to make any sort of repairs. So again, you can kind of make the platform and the base out of any materials you like. We used the cinder block, the wood, and the sand because they were cheap, readily available materials, and we knew that they would be sturdy and get the job done for us. It's not exactly period, but you could definitely make the oven out of more period materials if you want. You could make a base entirely out of wood and sand. Um, we just used the cinder block because it was, like I said, cheap and available. The one material that I am going to very strongly recommend, even though it is not period, is fire brick, which is what we used for the inside of the oven. Can we zoom in here to see the fire brick? So these pieces are the fire brick. Um, you can see they're not very large. I have small hands. They're a little bit larger than my hand. Um, they were a bit pricey. They were probably the priciest part of this build. I don't remember specifically what the cost was. Um, it was not cost prohibitive. It was just one of those numbers that made you go like, huh, this is going to be a little bit more expensive than I thought. Having said that, I still highly recommend them because they are the absolute safest thing that you can build the platform of your oven out of. The mud itself is fine. You can see we've got regular bricks on the outside here in our archway, but the inside of the oven where we get temperatures over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit, we wanted to have fire brick because we know it's the material that is rated 
for those temperatures. Again, it gets over a thousand degrees in there. Regular bricks will get very hot and they can explode. That is not safe and I cannot recommend it. So look for a local distributor of fire brick. I think we got ours at Home Depot. Um, if not, there's plenty of places that you can pick them up online. A little pricey, but 100% worth it because it's a safety concern. Okay, so at this point you've got your pattern made up, you've got your platform built, and you've got your fire brick laid out under where you want your oven to go to the width of your oven. The next important step is to build the oven itself, and to do that you need a mold. So as far as I'm aware, there are two main ways of doing this. One is to make a basket, which I'm going to talk about in more depth in a minute because that's the method that I recommend and the method that we use. The other method is to make a dome out of sand. So this is not the method hello, I used. I don't know a whole lot about it. It seems kind of messy to me, but it is totally doable. And I think, I believe the basic method is you make a dome out of sand, you cover it with mud, you let it dry, and you scoop all the sand out. We did not have a readily available source of sand we thought that that sounded like kind of a messier way to do it and we did have a readily available source of basket making material so we decided to go that route so i'm going to talk about that a little bit more now after i pick up the piece of paper that i was attacked by um so what you do is you make a basket and remember that big piece of cardboard that you drew out the width of your oven on earlier and i told you not to throw it away now it's going to come in handy so get that out again and what you're going to do is you're going to use that as the template for making your basket. And again, I'm gonna to try to insert a picture here. That will make that a little bit clearer, I hope. And if you have questions, you can refer to the handout. But what you're basically gonna do is use that as a template to weave a basket. I can't tell you how to weave a basket because I've never actually done it. My mother-in-law and my nephew did this project together one summer. Um, what I do recommend, and well, normally I recommend taking a basket weaving class at Penzik, but that's probably not gonna happen this year. So keep checking Penzik University online. Maybe someone will post a basket making class. Hint, hint, hint. Um, find out if anyone in your local group teaches basket making or just look for tutorials and videos online in general and figure it out yourself. This is a great beginner project because you're literally going to light it on fire. No one ever has to see this basket. We used grapevines because that was a material that was readily available in our area and we had growing in our yard. It was very easy to just cut some down, dry them out and use it to make a basket. But you could use reeds or other materials or if you know how to make a basket, you probably know that there are better materials to use. But anyway, we used, a, we used grapevines to make our basket. And again, I'll put a picture here. It So that you can see what I'm talking about. And that was the basis for our oven. We had our platform, we put our great buy basket on top, and then we got to the next step. The best step and the most funnest step, putting mud on top of everything. The next step is to build the door. Like I said earlier, a critically important part of the oven because without a door, all the heat goes out. You want the heat to stay in in order to cook. I know that's technical, but stay with me here. So a quick note about doors before you get all excited about making some fancy filigreed carved oak masterpiece. Doors are disposable. Like I said, it gets a thousand degrees in there. Even if the door's not directly on fire, it's gonna start to char and burn. You're gonna end up throwing it away at some point and making a new one, so don't get too fancy with it. I really like our construction method. Can you see it on film here? What we've got is a big solid core and then two sides of smaller boards that are just screwed on so that when this inner layer gets really charred and gross, we can unscrew it, screw on another layer, and this door will last us a little bit longer. Um, we also put a big handle, highly recommend, because 
you're not going to want to put your fingers around the door to pull it out. You want a big central handle that's going to be easy to move. The easiest way to make your door is to take that cardboard template that you had earlier, the one where you traced your arch out, and just use that as a template for making the door. It doesn't have to be a perfect fit. You can see we've got a lot of gaps here, and the heat does get out. But you know what? There's just nothing you can do. You're not going to be able to make a door that's a perfect fit. And honestly, I would prefer a door that slides in and out fairly easily and doesn't get stuck to one that makes an absolutely perfect seal. Before we talk about mudding the oven, we need to talk about where to get clay. As I said before, we live in Michigan, so we dug our clay straight out of the ground. Uh, if you live in a state where your soil is more suited to gardening than clay oven building, I'm kind of jealous but also you'll probably have to purchase your clay somewhere. Uh, you can buy it at specialty stores and you can buy clay online. The last time I looked it up, the going price seemed to be about a dollar or a dollar fifty per pound. You may be able to get a slightly better price than that. And of course you're going to need quite a bit of it. So this might be a pricey step of the oven if you have to purchase your clay. Uh, I would not recommend purchasing clay at craft stores like Michael's or Joann's just because um, the type of clay you're going to need for the oven is going to be too expensive to purchase in such small amounts. But once you've got your clay, the next step is to turn it into cob, which is simply just clay with straw mixed in. Uh, that's what all these little pieces are sticking out of the top. And our straw, or hay, was gifted to us by a friend, but this is something you can purchase at feed stores or other specialty stores or even big box stores depending on the time of year. And it's pretty simple to mix it in. What we did is get ourselves a big plastic shower curtain. Again, not period, but very practical. Dump all of our clay on it, dump all of our straw on it, fold it up, and dance around on it like we were having a blast. And I will put a picture of us looking very silly stomping around on a plastic shower curtain in our backyard. Okay, so I know I've said that every section is the fun section, but this is the really fun section. This is the part where you actually get to make a mess, have fun, and put the mud on your oven. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take the basket that you made, and you're going to center it on your platform the way you like it. Make sure that everything is in a good spot, you're comfortable with the placement of things, because really once you start putting mud on it, you're not going to want to move anything. So you've got your basket ready, and then the next thing to do is to put your door in place. And I know this seems a little early, you don't even have an opening, why would you need a door? But you want to make sure that you're mudding around the door properly. So what you're going to do, and again I'll have a picture here to clarify because it doesn't make as much sense when I'm just saying it out loud. So you've got your basket, and this pot is standing in for the basket, and you've got your door, and my little oven template is standing in for the door. Uh, you may see that there's going to be a gap here. Your basket is round, your door is not. So what I would recommend doing here is just adding a piece of cardboard to cover that gap. You can't mud over air, it'll just fall through. Um, what we did for the first iteration of our oven is we used a piece of metal sheeting there and mudded over that. I would not recommend that. The metal stayed after we fired out the oven and it got hotter than the rest of the oven so we ended up with cracks between the metal and the main dome of the oven. So I would not recommend. Uh, learn from our mistakes, just use a piece of cardboard. If you can't get it to stay, uh, tape it down with something. We used paper mache that worked pretty well for taping, for securing things together. So again, you've got your basket, you've got your door, and you've got a piece of cardboard or something burnable to bridge the gap in that space. Okay. So now the time has come to actually put the clay on your oven. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your cob and you're going to roll out snakes. And if anyone has ever taken a pottery class or been in kindergarten, you are probably familiar with this technique. So you'll have your basket and you're going to roll out snakes around your basket one layer at a time working up. Uh, we recommend that each layer be between three to six inches thick. The first time that we built our oven, and again we built it up over the years, 
our oven has thin spots as thin as four inches. And you can tell pretty quickly that you lose heat out of the thinner spots. So the thicker that you can make your oven total, the better. But three to six inches thick for each individual layer should be fine. Um, and again, if some spots come out too thin, you can always add another layer on top. We've slapped on like four or five extra layers of clay over the last six years that we've had this oven. So once you've got your first layer all put in, you're gonna wanna let it dry. And if possible, let it dry for anywhere between two to 12 hours. If you can let it dry overnight, that's great. If you're in a huge hurry, you don't have to do that. We didn't, we built our whole oven in one day at least the mudding part of it. We didn't particularly let it dry out between layers. It worked fine for us, so you can cut corners on this step, but if you have the time to do it correctly, there is some noise in the background. If you have the time to do it correctly, I do recommend letting it dry out between each layer. Uh, once you're done mudding it entirely, you've got the oven, it's as thick as you want it to be, you're happy with the shape and size, let it dry out again. And again, at least a couple of hours, recommend that you do it overnight or for a couple of days if you can. Um, this can be a weekend project. You could build the base on a Friday, do the uh, basket in some of the mudding on Saturday, finish up the mudding on Sunday, and it, let it dry out that weekend and use it the next weekend. That would be perfect. But if you're in a hurry or if you want to use the oven the same day that you built it, you can do that. Um, that's going to be the next step though, firing, and I'll talk about that in a second. So now we're going to talk about firing the oven for the first time. If you haven't had time to let it dry out as much as you would like to, you're gonna wanna take this first firing very, very slowly. If you have terracotta on the inside of your oven, which you will get, and the outside of your oven is still wet because you're firing it very quickly, the layers on the inside could explode. You've got water trapped in there and you're heating it hot enough to boil, but it's got nowhere to go because there's terracotta, it could explode. At best, you could get some major cracks in your oven. At worst, someone could get hurt. So you want to take that initial firing very, very slowly. Keep it at as low of a temperature as possible and really take your time. This is why we recommend letting the entire oven dry out for at least a couple of days before firing it for the first time. If you have fired, if you have let it dry out for a couple of days, you don't have to be as precise and as careful with that first firing. You do have to remember though that you've already got kindling in your oven. You've got that basket, potentially some paper mache. You don't want to put too much kindling in there to start with because you, you're going to have a big fire and that's not as fun as it sounds. So go slow, take your time. This is also a good time to practice heating up your oven for cooking. And again, the, the thicker your oven is, the longer it's going to take to heat it, to dry it out, to get it warmed up for cooking, but the longer it's going to hold and retain that heat, so the longer you'll be able to cook with it. Built an oven, it's all set to go. You built your platform, built your basket, mudded it, fired it, you're ready to eat. One of the questions I get a lot is, can we use it the same day that we fire it? Yeah, absolutely, it's 100% ready to go. You might not be able to cook on the same fire that you use to fire the oven, though. You might need to rebuild your fire up to retain more heat to be ready to cook. But you can absolutely use it the same day. Like I said, this can be a long weekend project. And trust me, cooking in a clay oven, super, super fun. Uh, I highly recommend it. We do recommend pizza because these, you've probably seen them at pizza restaurants. These are absolutely perfect for pizza. And if you've never had pizza made in an outdoor wood-fired oven, you are missing out. Uh, anyway, that is the end of the class. I think I've covered everything I want to talk about. If there's things that I didn't get to, I will list them on screen. Uh, I'm also going to put my email on screen and my contact information will be in the description of this video. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed.